Mass Effect 1 had a few side characters that never show up in later games. Now we do get emails in Mass Effect 2 from some of these folks as a sort of progress report as to how things are going with them since we last saw them, but we never physically interact with them again. One of the more prominent characters out of this bunch is Emily Wong. Emily Wong is an investigative journalist that we meet on the Citadel. She's investigating the corruption and organized crime on the station, and she will ask us to help her out as we can get into areas that she can. And I don't mind that because I like Emily. Her motives are genuine, and she's upfront with you compared to someone like Kalisa Aljawani, who approaches journalism like an ambushed predator. Her questions will start out cordial, but it'll become obvious that she's trying to spin a narrative. If you're not careful with her, she will make you look terrible. She's good at what she does, but she's not well liked. But anyway, the first mission she has for us is that she wants us to grab an OSD from a gang leader named Fist. This aligns with our own mission, as we're after Fist anyway, as we need him to tell us where to find Tally. He was the guy that Tally was supposed to meet on the Citadel. Fist was an agent for the Shadow Broker, but he defected the Saren's team. The Shadow Broker didn't like that, so that's why he sent Rex after him. Tally had info on Saren, it was sent to Fist not knowing that Fist was on Saren's payroll. So we need to save her from the trap that Fist laid for her. This is one of the more fun missions because Fist already knows you're coming, so you just pull up to the club and start airing the place out. Fist gets a shotgun to the face if Rex is there, and Emily gets her OSD. It works out for everybody. If you actually remember to grab the OSD while you're there, it's easy to forget about it. I've done it a couple times. But the good thing is, is that Fist's office will always be open so you can run back there and get it. The second mission isn't as action-packed, but it is for a good cause. She wants to run a story on the overworked traffic controllers, but she needs audio and visual evidence for her story. So what she wants us to do is to plant her bug in the traffic control center within CSAT. Depending on how you respond, you can get Paragon or Renegade points, XP, credits. However, if you didn't plant the bug, the news report states that Emily goes through the proper channels and secures an interview with the air traffic controllers. But if the bug was planted as agreed, Emily offers an inside look thanks to the surveillance. This is the last mission that you'll have for her, as the next time you hear from her is in Mass Effect 2. When I first saw this, I thought we may end up having an interview with her at some point, but we don't. There was an article within the Cerberus Daily News Network that mentions that a lot of people got fired within the media field on suspicion of them working for Cerberus. Emily managed to keep her job with the Future Content Corporation, although 25 of her co-workers got canned. She was right about one thing, if Cerberus operators weren't already in the media field before, this you are about to be now. If there's one thing that we learned throughout the series, it's that Cerberus loves to use sleeper agents. These articles aren't available through the game now, but there is a mod that will allow you to add some of them back to Mass Effect 2. Apparently Bioware didn't preserve these articles, but the fans did, and I love that they did that. I think it's good to preserve the defunct editions of old games. It's better than losing them to time, and we get things like this mod. As a plus, when you're on the Citadel, you can see her working as a newscaster through the video terminals. In Mass Effect 3, Emily reports for FCC News in the Alliance News Network on Earth. She was over in Los Angeles reporting on Earth's mysterious comm buoy outage. She manages to establish limited off world communications through a QEC. While she was reporting, she saw a Reaper arrive over the city. She meets some members of the National Guard who try to hold off the Reapers and get a counterattack, but that fails. I mean, we've seen how destructive the Reaper flagships are. Those guys never had a chance. Emily realized that the signal she was broadcasting led the Reapers to that location. While trying to escape, she gets shot and injured pretty bad, as the Alliance forces in the airport are destroyed. Critically wounded with no other weapons to use, she decides to ram her Sky Van into the Reaper. Her signal is lost after that, and she's considered to be killed in action. Yo, it is sad that she died, but she made sure that she went out in an awesome way. However, I do gotta mention that she's not mentioned in the game at all. She actually died before the start of the game, but there's more to it than that. It seemed like Emily was supposed to have a role in Mass Effect 3, but somewhere along the line, she was cut from the game. There's a video where Andy McAfee, the voice of Emily, talks about what may have happened. From what I got from the video, Emily was supposed to be in the game, but somewhere down the line, they decided to go with the Diana Hours character voiced by Jessica Chobot. And while I don't hate Hours, I think she's fine, but I think Emily may have fit better in this role, or maybe we could have got an option to choose who we wanted as we did with Dr. Chakwas and Dr. Michelle. However, there are ways you can add Emily to the game through mods, and I wanted to share two with y'all for this video. The first is called The Fate of Emily Wong, and this mod adds in Emily's last moments. While researching for this video, I kept running into Emily Wong was killed off on Twitter. And yeah, she was literally killed off on Twitter. 
You can still find the old Elias News Network feed on X slash Twitter, and this is where the messages came from. I didn't know about this page, and I do think it was cool if I were to have something like this, as if you look at the dates and times, it builds up to the midnight release of the game. I do think it was a tiny bit fucked up that she was killed off this way, but she did die like a boss, and it just is what it is. You'll receive an email from Diana with these messages in it, and this was a cool way to capture these messages and have them within the game. The second mod is called Emily Returns, and this mod adds Emily into the game in place of Diana, and it removes all references to Diana within the game. You meet her the same way you would meet Diana. She will send you a new email when joining the Normandy, and you get to choose between three outfits and two hairstyles. However, she'll still have Hour's voice. I'm not worried about that too much. It's cool just having her on the Normandy, period. However, I do need to point out something important. Do not run this mod with a mod like Project Variety, or you'll run into a situation where you'll have an hour's model, but everything else will mention Emily Wong. I think it has to do with this line right here, about how this mod is not compatible with any mod that mentions Emily Wong as being dead or not being on the Normandy. Project Variety has code that changes things with Diana, so I guess it created a conflict. But I wanted to see what could happen, so I went for it. Basically, I fucked around and found out, so don't be like me. But that ends this video guys. Emily Wong was one of my favorite side characters in Mass Effect 1. She was trying to do some good on the Citadel and it resonated with me. I don't know if her story's changed anything, but at least she was trying. I would have loved to have her as a crewmate in Mass Effect 3. And while I do think her character's exit from the series was unceremonious behind the scenes, at least she went out like a G in the end. I also want to add that there's a fan edit of her last moments on YouTube if you guys want to check that out. But I want to thank y'all for watching. Feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. D -D -D -J -Sonic